First turn, first draw is Smallwood. Now I've drawn the British chit. There is only one British chit. All the rest of the chits are American chits. Excuse me, colonial chits. I was going to swing his line forward to that point right there. And now the rest of the colonial forces move. I'll move them as a group. Now these two HQs have stopped one third away from two house because they are in column. And when you're in column, you can't move closer than one third to an enemy unit. That was early morning, mid morning. This time, again, Smallwood was drawn. At this point, he's reached the Busset Town Road. He knows at this point, he wants to join up with the rest of the forces. When the lead elements can spot some British Redcoats, they stop. Next to Sullivan, we're going to place his troops on the map, because we're going to start moving them out of column. And the British chit has been drawn. Howe rides east and signals Nipphausen's troops to start moving north. And Cornwallis' troops cautiously move north, occupying good defensive positions. Washington's command is placed on the map, and his troops deploy west of Chew House. And Green's troops, coming down the Reading Road, attack Chew House. And Armstrong's militia sit at the junction of Mandalay Road and Ridge Road and keep eye on the Eastern Way. The assault on Chew House, how long will it hold? <laughs> Chew House falls. But Nathaniel Green's troops do suffer more losses than they expected. And Sullivan's troops making first contact with the British. <laughs> and they defeat the detachment, but at a heavier price than they expected. It's late morning. Niphausen arrives to take control of his troops. He sends orders, and his troops move out. They are close enough to Smallwood to reveal his troops. This time, it was just a decoy. Smallwood's militia are actually over there. And they move forward. Washington moves his troops forward. And Howe dresses his line and gets ready for the attack. And Sullivan's troops drive hard. And Nathaniel Green's troops form up on the right. Washington and Green confer. Through the fog, Sullivan attacks. After a light engagement, Howe's troops fall back. It's midday. Green attacks along the Wissahickon. Armstrong is activated. His HQ is revealed to be nothing more than a decoy. He's over here commanding his militia. Sullivan drives towards the center. Sullivan asks Smallwood to protect his left. Washington's troops advance forward but stay in the fog. He directs Knox to place his artillery on the hill to his right. He sends a detachment to extend his right. He sends another detachment of regulars to strengthen Armstrong's militia. Nipphausen rallies his troops and orders his Hessians forward. Midday combat. Sullivan's blooded troops meet fresh British infantry. The troops fight to exhaustion. No one is left in control of that area. Over on the right, Green's troops assault. And no one is left in control of that hotly contested area. This has been a disastrous turn for the colonial troops. Both armies break with the loss of four blocks. The colonials have already lost three. The British, only one. The next turn in the early afternoon, Cornwallis arrives with the King's Grenadiers. Sullivan's command is exhausted. Green's, nearly so. But a faint heart never won glorious victory. Washington presses on. He sends the North Carolinians forward. Sullivan pulls his troops back and begins forming a rear guard. Green rallies his men and sends them forward. His other troops he sends in to the British flank. General Sir Howe sends forward the Queen's Rangers. Armstrong's militia, backed up with some of Washington's stalwarts, is not dismayed by Sullivan's retreat and his militia go forward. And Washington's regulars, no doubt joined by Joseph Plummer, can't resist but to assist the main assault. And Cornwallis arrives with his grenadiers, and he confers with General Howe. Combat in the center. Meta game moment, I'll talk about how you resolve a battle like this. At this point, the only effect of the flankers is to cause the flanking bonus. The first round of combat is fought between the two contacting units in the center. But the Colonials get the flanking bonus. Now the lead British unit is artillery and it fires first. It inflicted two hits which drive back the Colonial troops. Now in a combat like this, you fight from the inside out so those guys were first. These are second. Still first round, but here you have the Colonial Rangers who count as Dragoons and only get two dice. 
but they are flanking. They get two hits, driving back the colonial troops, and they're spent. Second round, you've got the overexcited troops, including Joseph Plummer, with a flank attack. In the second round, the artillery fires simultaneously. Both sides inflict a hit, the artillery flips to spent, the detachment is eliminated. We've all read the history, Joseph Plummer survives. But he and his little band of brothers are no longer part of this battle. They've probably fallen back and joined the militia. And here we have the spent colonials fighting the spent British. Neither side gives both fight to total exhaustion. They're both eliminated. And that breaks Washington's army. Germantown, early afternoon, the colonials are in retreat. Good game.